What is the best team I can build? This is by far the most common question I get on both YouTube and Twitch. This is a really important question, especially because building a character takes a ton of resources and maxing a character can take weeks or even months. So it feels really bad if you've built the wrong characters. Luckily in this video series, I'm going to cover really good teams for you so you don't have to worry about those problems. We're not only going to look at the characters you need and how to build them, but also how to play the team for maximum results. I'll also give you some potential variations you can make, but if you're missing some key character roles, then make sure to check out the other videos in the series. You'll also want to be subbed with the notifications on, that way you'll know more of the best team comps with different characters in the future. In this video, we're talking about the classic Taser team. The great thing about this team is it's not only one of the best in the game, but there's also a lot of variations you can make with different characters. But before we dive in, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, me! I put my personal art and shark art on a print-on-demand store. There you can find all types of things from t-shirts and hoodies, to magnets, phone cases, art prints, and even mini skirts. And I'm adding new things all the time. And know that each of your purchases is supporting shark art and shark art. So make sure to check it out in the link below, but not yet! Because first we're going to be covering the classic 4-star taser team. I'll go over what characters you need, how to play the team and do the rotations, how to build the characters, and finally team variations you can try with other characters. So let's dive in and shock all of Tavat. The classic 4-star Taser team consists of Fischl, Beto, Xingqiu, and Sucrose. And here's why this team is so strong and works so well. Fischl does good damage, applies a lot of electro off-field, and generates a lot of electro particles, which can be really nice since Beto needs a lot of help with energy. Beto is a very strong source of AoE electro damage that becomes further enhanced by snapshotting buffs and also being able to provide some defensive utility in the form of a shield at Constellation 1. Jingcho does good damage and applies a lot of Hydro off-field while also providing some healing, interruption resistance, and damage reduction. Sucrose triggers swirl reactions, dealing a lot of damage on her own while also reducing enemies' resistances, buffing allies' elemental mastery for more elemental reaction damage, and grouping enemies for even more AoE damage. As you may have guessed by the name Taser, this team focuses on electrocharge reactions to shock enemies over and over. You don't see big crit numbers with Taser teams because this reaction can't crit, but you do get tons of numbers that deal a lot of damage very quickly. And another unique thing about transformative reactions like Electrocharge is that they always look dynamically at the current elemental mastery of the character triggering the reaction. In other words, the opposite of snapshotting. But we won't have to worry about this because we'll be using Sucrose and her EM buff will be up pretty much all of the time. So let's go over how to play this team. First use Fischl's skill, then Jingcho's skill, and then burst, and then skill again if you have a sacrificial sword. Then use Sucrose's skill, normal attack, burst, and then normal attack again. Then use Beidou's skill and burst. Then use Fischl's burst. Then spam Sucrose's normal attacks and skill. You can do about four normal attacks and get maybe one or two skills depending on what weapon you have. And then finally finish off with Beidou's skill. Now I know this sounds pretty complicated, but let me break down why we're doing what we're doing at each phase during this rotation. We start with Fischl's skill first because Oz lasts a while and you can deal some good damage while going through the rest of the rotation. We use Jingcho's skill and then burst to catch the hydro particles on Jingcho before he switches out. And if you have a sacrificial sword, you can do his skill, burst, and then skill, so that way you can do more damage with his elemental skill, especially if you have constellation 4 or higher Jingcho. His burst will also apply the longest lasting off-field damage, and since it's hydro, it's perfect for the electrocharged reaction. Next we do Sucrose's skill, normal attack, and then burst, and then normal attack once again. This groups enemies, applies animo for the swirl reaction, and gives you all the wonderful bonuses Sucrose provides, including the elemental mastery buff, the viridescent buff, and grouping enemies together. Next we want to use Beidou's skill and then burst. This is a really strong source of electro damage, and we want to try to get a perfect parry on her skill, as it not only deals a lot more damage, but it gives more energy particles. It'll take some practice to consistently be able to do the perfect parry with Beidou's skill, but it is worth it. Next we'll use Fischl's burst, as the duration of her bird Oz will be running out by now, and you can use Fischl's burst to redeploy him. Next switch to Sucrose and use her normal attacks and skills as soon as they're up. Typically you can do 4 normal attacks before you need to switch out, but this is depending on if you need to dodge or reposition yourself. But here's a pro tip to make this easier. 
You don't actually have to count the normal attacks you're doing. Just use Sucrose's normal attacks and her skill until you have about 6 seconds left remaining on your elemental burst cooldown. This is a really important part of the rotation because normal attacking continuously will apply Jingcho and Beidou's burst to trigger electrocharged while Sucrose is causing swirl reactions for tons of damage. And then finally switch to Beidou and use her skill to get more energy and then start the rotation all over again. So let's go over that one more time in a simplified manner. First we start with Fischl skill, second is Jingcho's skill and burst, third is Sucro's skill and burst, fourth is Beidou's skill and burst, then we switch back to Fischl to use Oz, then we switch to Sucro's to spam normal attacks and skills, and then we finally use Beidou's skill one more time. Now that you know how to play the team, let's talk about how to build the characters. We'll start with Fischl. For Fischl's weapons, the Polar Star is her best in slot for pretty much every build, but you can also use Elegy for the end or pretty much any other 5-star bow as they're great stat sticks for her. But for 4-star weapons, the Alley Hunter and Stringless are both very good for her, and you can also use the event-exclusive Fading Twilight to some pretty good effect too. If you don't have any of these, you can also use the Favonius Warbow to help generate more energy for your team, but Fischl's personal damage will suffer. As far as Fischl's talent priority, it's all about the elemental skill, so level that one first. And you can level her elemental burst, but it's not going to be that significant. And you don't want to level her normal attack since you're using her off-field, so save your books on that. Constellations really aren't necessary on Fischl, but her C3 and C6 are the best if you're going to go for Constellations. As far as artifact sets, Fischl has a lot of variety of things she could run. Any two-piece combination of attack percent sets, EM, Thundering Fury, all of those work for Fischl. Just use whatever has the best subsets overall for her. But if you really want to farm a four-piece artifact set for her, then a four-piece Thunder Soother, four-piece Gilded Dreams, or even a four-piece Tenacity of the Millilith are all good options for her. Just remember, it's all about the overall substats Fischl is getting from all of the artifacts, so it's typically going to be better for most people to run two-piece two-piece just to get better overall stats. And speaking of substats for Fischl, you want to get about 120 energy recharge and then just go as much attack, crit rate, and crit damage as you can get. And if you get a little bit of EM, that's nice too. Next, we're moving on to Jingcho. For Jingcho, if you have the Primordial Jade Cutter, Mist Splitter, Haranga Patsu Futsu, or Skyward Blade, these are all great 5 star options, but a lot of his really good weapons are actually 4 stars. The Sacrificial Sword is one of Jingcho's best options, and at R1 and R2, it's kind of just a stat stick for energy recharge, but at Refinement 3, it can consistently proc its passive, allowing Jingcho to hit his skill twice. The Favonia Sword is also one of Jingcho's best 4-star weapon choices. It gives him a ton of ER, and it has a consistent trigger of its passive, which not only decreases the energy recharge requirements for Jingcho, but also the entire team. If you have the limited event weapon, the Festering Desire, this is also great for Jingcho as it gives him energy recharge and increases his skill damage. As far as free-to-play options, the craftable Amanoma Kageuchi and Sapwood Blade are both pretty good for Jingcho. Though if you are going for the Amanoma, it's recommended that you go at least Refinement 3 or more because Jingcho rarely gains more than one stack from its passive. Now for Jingcho's talent priority, he is going to be an off-field DPS, so you want to level his burst first, and then his skill, and you can completely ignore his normal attacks. Now for constellations, a C0 Jingcho is very strong, but if you do want to go for constellations, it's not a bad idea because all of them are good. His C6 and his C2 are by far the best though. For artifact sets for Jingcho, a 4-piece emblem of the Severed Fate is by far his best artifact set. It not only helps him with his energy recharge problems, but it makes his burst stronger while solving that problem. But if you really don't want to farm a 4-piece emblem of the Severed Fate set, you can use 2-piece combinations of any Heart of Depth, Noblesse, Emblem, or Attack Percent artifact sets. As far as Jingcho's stat priorities, the main thing to look for is energy recharge, and you're going to want at least 200% in most cases. This energy recharge requirement drops down significantly to about 150% if you have an R3 Sacrificial Sword and a C6 Jingcho, but most of the time you're going to want to run at least 200% energy recharge anyways. So the artifact substats you want to prioritize are energy recharge, and then crit rate, crit damage, and finally attack percent. Next, on to Sucrose. For Sucrose's weapon, you want to use the Sacrificial Fragments. This is the best for her as an on-field driver because it provides high elemental mastery and another use of her skill. This weapon allows Sucrose to apply even more animo and get a lot more energy, reducing the amount of energy recharge she needs. 
Now, if you don't have the sacrificial fragments, there are two very good three-star weapons you can use. The first of which is the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers. This can give a massive attack buff to the character you switch into right after Sucrose, which is exactly why we have Beto right after Sucrose in the rotation. And if you want Sucrose's personal damage to be a bit better, but don't have the sacrificial fragments, you can use the three-star weapon, the Magic Guide. This weapon works great in taser team comps like this one, and with Sucrose making it a pretty solid option for a 3-star weapon. As far as Sucrose's talents, you actually don't need to level her talents at all if you don't want to. Instead, you should focus on leveling her character level. Sucrose does most of her damage through transformative reactions, and these only scale off of character level and elemental mastery, not talent level. So leveling her talents is pretty unimportant and you can save that resin for something else. Now moving on to constellations for Sucrose. You really don't need constellations on Sucrose, but C1 is one of her best constellations as it gives you a second charge for your elemental skill. So this provides more swirl, more grouping, and less energy recharge needed for Sucrose. So if you do see Sucrose on a rate up banner, I'd recommend going for C1 if you have extra primo gems. Now on to artifact sets for Sucrose. There is one. She has one artifact set that you always use on her, and that is the four-piece Viridescent Venerer set. No other artifact set comes close to the amount of damage and utility the VV set can provide for Sucrose and your entire team. As far as artifact subsets go, you want to get as much elemental mastery on Sucrose as possible. The only other subset that matters for her is energy recharge, and you want to get around 120 to 140 energy recharge. So if you have sacrificial fragments and her constant Constellation 1, you'll be fine around 120 energy recharge, but if you don't have those things, you want to go a little bit higher. Next, we're moving on to the final member of the classic taser team, Beto. For Beto's weapons, the Wolf's Gravestone and Skyward Pride are both good 5-star options for her, but she also has some pretty good 4-stars, including the Serpent Spine. If you do plan on buying the Battle Pass, the Serpent Spine is usually one of the best weapons you can get, and it's extremely good on Beto. However, the Akuamaru is virtually identical to the Serpent Spine in most conditions while unbuffed, so don't feel like you need to spend on the Battle Pass, especially if you have this weapon. Other options for Beto include the R5 Luxurious Sea Lord. This is the ultimate free-to-play weapon because it was free from an event, and you get to smack people with a big fish. But if you don't have the Luxurious Sea Lord or just want a little bit more damage, then craft the Prototype Archaic. This is the normal thing that she runs with, and it's really good for her. You can also use an R5 Rain Slasher, but honestly, the Prototype Archaic and almost all of the other 4-star options I listed are generally better than the Rain Slasher. But if you also plan to use Beto in an Aggravate team, this is a decent option. As far as talent priority, since Beto is going to be an off-field DPS, we want to level her burst first, and then her skill, and you can completely ignore her normal attacks. Next, we move on to constellations. Beto's constellations are actually pretty significant, especially her C2. And the advantage of having her constellation 2 is you'll also have her constellation 1, which will give your characters an electro shield. And the reason Beto's constellation 2 is so strong is because it gives her extra bounces on her elemental burst, or extra electro shocks between enemies. These bounces increase her burst damage by about 66%. And if you're fighting two enemies, it can now hit the initial target three times and then the second target twice per proc. Now, some people think that Beto does not do well when fighting large numbers of enemies, and that's not necessarily true. Beto's damage really isn't that amazing when you're only fighting one enemy, and it's at its best when you're fighting exactly two enemies. But if you are fighting more than two enemies, her C2 still provides more than five times her single target damage. Her damage really only stops scaling if you're fighting more than 5 enemies at once. And overall, she is really, really strong. And to show off her power, let's talk about what artifact sets you want to run with her. In general, you want to run a 4-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate. This gives Beto some much needed energy recharge, and it makes her burst hit even harder when you have more energy recharge. But if you don't want to farm another 4-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate, you can use 2-piece Thundering Fury, 2-piece Noblesse Oblige, or 2-piece Attack sets as well. As far as subsets go, you want to shoot for around 150 to 160 energy recharge, then go for crit rate, crit damage, and attack percent, and if you get a little bit of elemental mastery, that's just the cherry on top. And that's how you gear and build this team. And one thing you may have noticed is that this team doesn't have a healer. But that's generally okay because of the combination of Jingcho's Rain Swords and Beidou's Shield at C1. Because the damage reduction from Jingcho's Rain Swords also affects the damage taken by Beidou's Shield, it means that together you can boost the Shield's effective durability to about 14,000 effective HP. 
And to put that into perspective, Xingqiu and Beidou together can block about as much damage as a level 90 Scaramouche has HP. This still requires you to dodge, but you're not going to get one shot by all the enemies that you're fighting. Now this classic version uses 4 stars only, but there's plenty of other characters you can make for variations on this team. You could use Ayato or Child as your on-field DPS. You could also use Yaimiko and Kuki as your Electro characters. And if you didn't have Sucrose, you could use a character like Hazo or the Wanderer, and they'll do less swirl damage but have more personal damage. You could even use Barbara as the on-field driver if you really needed to. Basically, as long as you have good off-field Electro and or Hydro, and then an Animo character to help swirl, you're golden. But maybe you don't have all these characters, or this team just isn't quite for you. If that's the case, then I've got a playlist with other really good team comps you can build, and I'll link that at the end of the video. So make sure to check that out if you want to know what other really good teams you can build. And now you can go check out the cool Shark Heart Shark Art in the link in the description below. I love you all, stay jawsome, may order guide you, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.